Welcome to Inside the Pain, an inside look into all of the action of the British Basketball League. Teams are starting to secure their spots in the playoffs, so make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the action. I'm Todd Harris, and I'm joined by two of Leicester's finest, Captain Kimball McKenzie and head coach Rob Paternostro. And Kimball, has Coach Rob been coaching you up for your appearance here on television? Yeah, you know, in practice today, he came over and gave me a couple cues, just kind of what to expect. Obviously, I watch all the games, so I see Rob doing a lot of the games, and he's an expert at it at this point. So, yeah, he's been doing a good job helping Well, if we out. break down the tape, Coach, how's he doing so far? He's doing great. And I think what's uh, been so impressive, he's prepared. And that's not a surprise for me because he's prepared on the basketball court and he's prepared with the mic in his hand as well. I have full faith. Well, round 22 of the championship is now underway, and we will be previewing this week's action in just a moment. But first, it's time to announce February's Molten Player and Molten Kevin Cadle Coach of the Month. Kimball, you'll have honors. Give us the Coach of the Month, if you don't mind. Okay, so in third was... Peter Bozic, uh, I believe he was undefeated, so <laughs> tough crowd out there for him. I thought he did a decent job being undefeated. In second was Lloyd Gardner, obviously Surrey's being in a good run of form. Yep. And in first, Ben Thomas, you know, they've been excellent this year, undefeated in, in that month and doing a great job. Coach Rob was in the running as well though, right, Kimball? I mean, he's always I, in the running. I believe our record was pretty good as well, so always he's always in, in the, the running. running. Sure. Coach Rob, you've got the Molten Player of the Month. Okay, Molten Player of the Month in third place, London Lions sharpshooter Matt Morgan. Can't argue with that. In second place, Surrey's rebounder Saquon Jameson. Mm -hmm. And in first place, the man, the myth, the legend, Teddy Allen. Oh, yeah. Teddy Buckets. Teddy Buckets, uh, you were the one that brought his, my attention first, and you said, wait till you get a look at this Teddy Buckets kid. He's living up to the hype. Ah, he's been awesome. I think that, um, yeah, we've uh, you know, played really good basketball since he's arrived, but um, he's worth the price of admission. I'll tell you that. You come to a game, you'll enjoy the game. Kimball, does it make your life a little easier knowing that you got uh, Teddy Buckets somewhere floating on the wing or the baseline? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it takes, takes a ton of pressure off of our offense, off of me, myself. Um, yeah, the type of guy that, as his nickname suggests, can go out there and get a bucket. Um, so, yeah, he's been a pleasure to have around. Great guy um, on the court and off the court. So, yeah, been a pleasure. Lester Riders are a rounded out team. Well, this Thursday night, the Sheffield Sharks hosted the Surrey Scorchers at the Cannon Medical Arena. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, they started out fast, did the Sheffield Sharks. They came out and jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Everything for the home team was falling inside and out, and it looked like it was going to be an absolute blowout because the Surrey Scorchers were just out of sync. But for a team that makes so many three-pointers, you knew at some point they were going to start to fall, and they did. In the second half, even the old-fashioned way, the bucket plus the harm as Josh Steele gets it to fall. But it was the inside game, Green going to work on the inside. And when that wasn't working, they go to the outside. Outside. The shots were dropping, everyone contributing across the board, and head coach at Team Alliance had a wealth of talent out on the floor at any one time. Looked like Sir was going to make it a game as they cut it down to seven in the fourth quarter, but a few bad mistakes and some clutch shots like this one really determined the game. 71-62, Sheffield would get the win, and for Team Alliance, 500 games, coach, you're going to be in the same club as well. That was a huge win for them, a gutty win. Yeah, great win for them. And I think, you know, they took advantage of a slow starting Surrey team. Surrey took a long time to get going and Sheffield took advantage of it. Surrey got back into it a little in the second half, but I think the damage was done in that first half. Kimball, you talk about a team that get a big lead and then also the other team comes back. We were talking about, oh, it's starting to get a little tight in there. Uh, what do you do as a team to get out of that kind of a funk and get back to your dominance? Yeah, definitely. It can be a tricky time when, when you see yourself with a 15-point lead. All of a sudden you look up, it's mid-fourth quarter and it's a seven-point game. Um, I I think just getting back to what got you there, you know, playing inside out, playing good defense. Um, and yeah, I mean, just letting the game come to you. At this point of the season, it's a battle for standings. Let's take a look at where that leaves us after that one as we take a look with the fixtures still to come. Sheffield getting the win. There you see Newcastle and Caledonia. They'll have home games. And Cheshire Phoenix will be welcoming the Plymouth City Patriots on Saturday. And then we'll wrap things up on the weekend on Sunday. Doubleheader, Bristol Flyers welcome in the Leicester Riders and the well-traveled Coach Rob and Kimball McKenzie. Then Caledonia will close things out on the weekend as the Newcastle Eagles head to Caledonia. Well, there are the standings after we close out this week. The London Lions 
looking very good. Cheshire Phoenix, Caledonia, top three, Leicester in the hunt in four. And we have five more games coming your way this weekend, which will be fantastic. And of course, everyone battling for a top eight position coach. If you're not in there, it's nervous time. Well, yeah, you want to get in that top eight to give yourself a chance in the playoffs, but you also want to finish as high up the table as possible. And I think that, um, you know, when you look at that table, there'll be a lot of movement for the next few weeks, no doubt. Well, to start us off on Friday night, the Manchester Giants will travel to take on the Newcastle Eagles. The Giants need a win if they want to make it into playoff position, following which the Caledonia Gladiators will host the London Lions. We're now joined by Zania Stewart and Daniel Routledge. Z, the Gladiator fans will be coming out in full force having sold out the new Caledonia Arena. What does that mean for the future of British basketball? That's right, Todd. I love this for the league, but I love this for Caledonia. Obviously, a brand new arena and for them to sell it out this far in advance. And remember, Caledonia is one of, you know, a few teams that have beaten London Lions. It's a 2-1 in regular season. It was that overtime win. Uh, it was 94 to 100. A wonderful game. I think we're going to see this here in Caledonia. Well, it's interesting because they've got two home games this weekend. And if you put two wins on their standings, they're looking at at Cheshire, if you put two losses on their standing, suddenly they're looking over the shoulder at, at Rob and his Leicester Riders and the Newcastle Eagles. It, it really is a, a big weekend for the Caledonia Gladiators. Can they get two big home wins? And it's important that you win your home games. So for them to sell out this crowd is fantastic for them, but it, they've got to get it done. London Lions are coming into town. They're feeling good. They're coming off their European win. Caledonia, can they get it done? Dan and Z, as always, thanks for the insight. Now, on Saturday, the Cheshire Phoenix will hope to continue their winning ways as they host the Plymouth City Patriots. Rob, your team handed the Phoenix their first loss of 2024. Do you have your eyes on their league table spot? What are we looking at? Well, not really. Um, you know, they're they're pretty far ahead there, so we got to keep uh, worrying about our own games that we have. But um, I thought it was a big win for them on the weekend after losing to us in a tough game on Friday. They came back Sunday with a deficit at halftime, but they were able to pull it out at home. They've been a good team at home this season. Kimball, an eventful game for you. Uh, you're going to see him again. What did you think of your team's performance after you had a, an early visit to the locker room? Uh, yeah, great team performance. Uh, you know, I thought guys stepped up. Uh, TJ had an amazing game. I thought Myron was huge. Connor came in, ran the show as we know he can. Um, so, yeah, just proud of the group. Just really wanted to get that win. I was in the locker room there, uh, me and Teddy cheering on the guys going nuts. So, uh, yeah, it was good to get the win. Well, to close out the weekend, the Newcastle Eagles will travel to take on the Caledonia Gladiators. But first, the Bristol Flyers will host the Leicester Riders. Rob, this is going to be your 500th game in the league. What have been some of your more memorable moments, I should say, that stick out in your mind? I know we've got ours, but what are yours? <laughs> Well, for me, you know, when you talk about league fixtures, the first time we won the league. Leicester had never won the league before. Um, you know, we had a home game, which was awesome. And um, I can remember that great feeling, not only for myself, but for our team, but also for Kevin Routledge in the organization. You know, it was such a great organization. And to bring home that first piece of silver for a league title, that was fantastic. Kimball, you know him better than most. What does Coach Rob's longevity mean to you? And, and what do you think it means to the league on a whole? Yeah, I mean, you see how he approaches every day. Um, you know, it could be a, a Sunday in, you know, whatever game in the league, and he's treating it like it's the, you know, the championship. So uh, just his commitment to excellence, you know, how he approaches every day, um, something I think rubs off on the team. Get back to the Bristol game. First of all, this is a team when they're fully fit. They've had a lot of injuries, but when they're fully fit, tough team to handle. Good basketball team. A lot of talent, well coached, uh, play defense. And yeah, you, like you say, when they're, when they're healthy, they can be a tough team, especially at home. So we know that uh, we can't underestimate and we got to put our best foot forward. Let's talk about the all-star game that's fast approaching. You'll be playing in that game. Uh, the contestants for the three-point game uh, have been announced. Of course, Matt Morgan from the London Lions and Aaron Rye from the Cheshire Phoenix, Megan Gustafson from the London Lions, and Georgia Gale from the Sheffield Hatters will be facing off in the hopes of claiming the title of best shooter in Britain. Rob, if you, Kimball, Betty Man, who, who you putting your cash on? I'm going to go Georgia Gale. How about oh, that? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go outside. for her. She's been a great shooter for a long time. Uh, yeah, we'll put a little pressure on her now. <laughs> Get the job done. Between, between Matt Morgan and Aaron Rye, that's, that's a tough one. I'm going to go Matt Morgan. Uh, you know, we've seen it all season long. He's, he's deadly from out there. He's uh, made a couple in my eye, unfortunately. Uh, so I'll go with Matt Morgan. 
All right. To catch all the all-star action, make sure to get your tickets from the link below. Well, that's all from us this week. Leave a comment below to let us know if North or South will take the win at the all-star game. And make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss a minute of the British Basketball League. We'll see you next time.